Good afternoon. Welcome to SPEDFORMS 504 User Training using SPEDFORMS version 2.0. So SPEDFORMS, today you're going to think about how to set up your profile and your team member list, how to navigate within SPEDFORMS, and it's very similar to all the other platforms we have. So if indeed you have used SPEDFORMS on the special education side, this is very similar. We're going to show you how to manage your 504 dashboard. We're going to show you how to work with and finalize the forms and then navigate to the student's history page. And we're going to share with you some resources where you can get help. But because it is like SPED forms, the special education side, truly, if you, if you have questions, go find out one of your special ed colleagues. If they've used SPED forms before in version 2.0, they'll be able to help you because it's a very similar platform. So we're going to start with your educator setup and your educator profile. When you log into SPEDFORMS, you're going to get a password or a link and a password from your district if this is new for you. And it'll have your district name up at the top. Notice at the bottom, there's something that says uh, support or browser setup instructions. You will want to go through that the next time or the first time that you want to print a document. And whatever uh, printer, computer connection that you have, each time you have a different one, for example, if you have your laptop at home and a printer at home, you're going to want to set up the browser instructions for that. But then if you go to school and there's a desktop and the computer printer, you're going to want to do another browser setup instruction. And it just makes sure that your printing looks really nice. So you, again, would have been given a link to the district site. You would have been given a username and a password. And then, of course, you're going to want to bookmark this login page for efficiency after that. Once you get logged in, you're going to see something that looks like this at the top, up in the upper right-hand corner, those three horizontal lines. We call that our hamburger menu. It kind of looks like a hamburger, right? And then below that is our navigation menu. So this is the left-hand navigation bar. What you see in the hamburger menu will change slightly based on what district you're in and what, what the, your district has purchased. Maybe your district uses a special ed MA and 504, but they don't use MTSS or health dashboard. You wouldn't see that then. So again, this will be determined by what your district has purchased and, and is using. This is your primary means or mode of navigation within SPED forms. And you can always tell where you are because it's in blue. Right now, I was in the special ed dashboard when I grabbed this screenshot. But if you were in the 504 dashboard, that would be blue. So this, again, is called our hamburger menu. And this is your basic navigation tool. So now we're going to show you how to get yourself set up. They've put some basic information in for you, your district has, but we're going to give you some additional choices to make. So go under that hamburger menu. If you're going to follow along and you scroll down to a kind of a gear icon, if you will, and it says educator setup, if your hamburger menu is open. If it's not, Click on these three lines, and then you will get the words beside it. Here's where the hamburger menu is closed, and all you see is icons. Here's where the hamburger menu is open. Clicking the hamburger changes that for you. So once you click into Educator Setup, then you'll see these choices here. And I want you, if you're clicking along, to go to Educator Profile. So you just click on that document. This is where you can edit and add information. You really want to keep this up to date and current. You put in your school phone number and your school address, that sort of thing. If you work in multiple schools, provide the phone number that's linked to your voicemail. And if in your, if again, if you're in multiple schools, use an email address that's accurate 
and a mailing address where you would pick up your physical mail. Which building do you do that? And so those are things that you're going to want to make sure that are updated. If you get married and your email changes, you're going to want to go in and make sure that the school or that you have the accurate and up-to-date email because if you forget your password over summer, for example, you will um, be able to receive the necessary reset link with that accurate email. So we've got information at the top in the, the profile information. Think about the title that you want. Are you, a, are you a language teacher? Are you a 504 instructor? Are you a 504 counselor? What term, what title applies to you in your district? So at the top, you can see a Chevron. Um, here's the Chevron, we call this. If you click it, it opens information. And so you're going to want to reset your password. As with all things, when, when you get a password at the beginning from your district, you're going to want to reset that. So there's the old, new, and confirm. And you can, of course, show your password as you're typing it if you want. Again, make sure your title is correct. We've got some rules for passwords. It's also written on the page. Next, you'll see that contact information. These are the settings that can be changed at your discretion, but of course, follow your district guidance. As we're scrolling down, now you're going to get to settings. And this is version. If you're in version 2.0, that's where you want to be. That's what we're talking about today. Um, we would say, please don't change the print font size. It's been calculated to have optimal printing of documents so they're nice and clean and professional looking. You can choose when you want your calendar to start. Do you want it to start on a Monday, a Sunday, or a Saturday? Up to you. Here's something brand new, enable autosave. If you click this, you are going to have the system, when you're in a form, saving automatically for you every five minutes. Now, there's still a green save button there. If you want, you can save at, that way. But this is, so let's say you were working on something, you hadn't hit the, 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 you hadn't hit the save button, but now you have to exit because there's a fire drill, right? After five minutes, SPED forms will auto save for you so you don't lose that information. Um, provide, hide provider name on the services entry screen. This would be for those individuals that work in the office, but don't necessarily work directly with students. They need to work within SPED forms, but not with students. And if you want to keep that hamburger menu open all the time so you can see the words, this is what you'd want to click. Now, if you, you're using small handheld devices, you're not going to want that because you don't want those words taking up a lot of your screen. There's another click here, send me an email when a new message arrives. So this is another new function. If when there's somebody asking you to share a student or to send a student, that sort of thing, any of those within SPED forms emails, this will send you an email when the message arrives. It doesn't tell you what the message is. You still have to go to the messages, and we'll show you where that is later. But you're going to want to, this will just give you an email reminder. Now, this is not a form, right? This is back-end information. So if you have been clicking along and made any changes, you're going to want to go up to the top and find the Save button and hit the Save button. You can go in here and change this anytime, multiple times a day if you wanted. But this is places for you to choose from. There, lastly, you'll see some login settings. Um, where do you want to go when you first log into SPED forms? Do you want to go to a SPED dashboard, a 504 dashboard? There are some other choices here. You get to decide where it is you want to go to SPED Forms when you log in. Maybe it's the last place you were at. Up to you. Here's a secret question. Right, answer, and confirm. And if your district uses something called uh, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication, 
they'll have instructed you to, to uh, select this. And there you go, click that Save button. All right, now we're gonna return to Educator Setup. And Andrea, I'm gonna toss it your way, is that all right? So that we can go back and forth here? Absolutely. So if you return to Educator Setup, now we will talk about the team member list. So this is something that you can control for yourself, who you see on your team member list. It's optional. You don't have to do this. Um, when you are on forms, putting together the, the list of educators that might be involved in um, completing different parts of forms for students, um, there is a section that's called the global team member list. And that is not something that you as an educator can control. That's your SPEDFORMS admin that controls who appears in, in that list for you. Um, and depending on what sort of process they use, it might not be as useful as you would like it to be. So if you navigate to your team member list, um, yeah, let's go ahead. The, the, the team member list does allow you to efficiently enter team members onto future students' forms with just a couple of clicks. Um, it eliminates the need to retype names, which is great. <laughs> we like to save time. Uh, this is a great place to add interagency colleagues who aren't district employees, such as Head Start, public or mental health, or social service employees. Um, and you can also add district employees who do not use SPED forms, but will be team members for your students. So if there's gen ed staff, for example, um, especially if they have, well, yeah, enter them just once into your team member list. Then you don't have to worry about spelling it wrong or typing it wrong in the future. So when you get to that team member list page, you would click either of those add buttons. Um, the one that's down on the right hand side will keep moving itself down the page as you add more. So there will always be an add button at the top and the very bottom of the page. When that opens, it's going to add a bunch of blank fields for you. You can type directly into any of those fields, or you can click that team member icon to choose from your team selector, including, like I said, your district global list. So this is what that would look like, that team selector. Um, Notice that the global team members has a lot of people, potentially has a lot of people on it. There is a search field at the top of the global team member section where you can start typing names. Um, the name doesn't have to start with that letter. So if you were to type the letter A, for example, um, demo account would still be on your list. But well, OK, that's not a good example. But <laughs> just know um, that it's looking for that letter or any combination. Yeah, anyway. Um, Sorry, I'm not explaining that well, and that's okay. Um, so your team members at the top are currently empty because you don't have any team members. Um, and like I said, global team members are determined by your SpedForms admin. Scroll through and check the box or type in the search field to narrow down that list. And then you can continue editing and adding team members. As time goes on, you may need to remove people from your team member list by clicking delete. If they are no longer with the district or no longer with um, their employer, or um, if they're just not working with your students, you can go ahead and delete them. It does not delete them from anywhere else other than your team member list. So don't be afraid of that delete button on your team member list. All right. So I'll jump in and I will do 504 forms using the dashboard. So we're going to start with some vocabulary. We have, we will say the plan manager. Some districts call it case manager, but we generally say plan manager. That's the person who controls that student's records within SPED forms. There are also what we call SPED forms administrators. Those are the individuals in the district who oversee and manage how SPED forms works within your district. There are lots and lots of choices of how to make it work. And so the SPED forms administrator in your building is the person that can, then takes care of that. We've got read only access. That means individuals are able to look at the student's record in SPED forms, but they're not able to change any forms. They're not able to do anything with the forms. 
if a individual is given edit access, that means they can look at the forms and work in a student's record. They can type in there, they can add things, they can remove things. So working copy is the next vocabulary word. That's the form as it exists on the computer screen. It's the copy that you are working on. But once you've completed something on that working copy and you've validated it or finalized it, then that copy gets stored as a PDF in SPEDFORM's history. You can't change that because it's a PDF, right? It's like having printed a paper copy and given that paper copy to the parent. So the working copy always exists there, but the finalized copy is done when you hit finalize and then it goes into the history folder. All of the students' files, any documents, any forms, anything will all go into one history file for that student. So if the student started out uh, as an early childhood kid receiving early childhood special ed services and then was dismissed from service, but now is receiving 504 services, all of the documents from that student, from that district are in the files. And then if this student now moves from Anoka Hennepin to Pipestone, all the things that have been finalized, all of it that's, in, that's been put into student history goes with that student to the new district. So super helpful. When you get a new kid into the district, you get a complete file of anything that's been saved by SPEDFORMS users. So we're going to talk about managing your 504 dashboard. When you navigate to your 504 dashboard, you can choose it by on the hamburger menu. And then you're going to see all the students that have been shared with you within SPEDFORMS. So we've got Thursday afternoon. That's a kid's name, right? We've got all fake kids here. Cherry Blossom. You can tell what school they're in, what grade they're in, what their birth date is. Um, you could have plan dates, eligibility dates, and information. But so if I click on Thursday afternoon, that's going to open Thursday afternoon up and we'll see all of their forms. But there's lots of hidden information here. So we're going to look at what you can do. On this screen, if you see a shaded row, that means you are the plan manager. Now, there might be other individuals, maybe the nurse or maybe the principal has been shared with this student, but they're not the plan manager. You're the plan manager if it's shaded. If it's white row, you have access to that student. So maybe you are the nurse and you have a lot of students that you have access to, but you're not the 504 plan manager for. You can sort any of the lists by clicking on the headings. If you want to sort by school, click on school. If you want to sort by name, right, click on name. If you want to sort by grade, birth date, et cetera, just click on those headings and you can sort and slice and dice them all as many times a day as you need to. We talked earlier about where you would get messages and that is up in this upper right-hand corner. There is a blue little person icon. This is a shortcut to the educator setup. We also got to your educator setup over here. Remember, we scrolled all the way to the bottom of the hamburger menu, but you could go over here to educator setup. You can click on messages and then you will have all the messages. You can see here there's a little red two. That means there's two messages for this, for this case manager. And to see the messages, they click message and then they would see both of them. There's pickups and sign outs. So maybe you have to pick up a student. Maybe you've been assigned a new student and you need to pick them up. That would be here. And signing out is at the end of the day or the end of the work period. When you're finished, we want you to make sure that you sign out. Because if you were working in Johnny Jump Up and you are done, but now the nurse wants to work there, you still have access to Johnny Jump Up until you have been logged out. And so we would say, please sign out, 
play nice in the sandbox so that everybody can get to the students they need to when they have that precious uh, time to work on paperwork. Other things that you can find on this dashboard. The gear icon, the blue gear icon, brings you to the student setup page. You may or may not have access to it. It depends on how the district administrator, the district special SPED forms administrator, has things set up. You can search for students shared with you up here. And here, you open a pop-up window that gives you more information. So I'm in orange leaves. I'm, I'm shaded, so that means I'm the plan manager. If I click here, I can see the student name. I can see their ID number. I can see who the plan manager is. And I can see orange leaves age in years and months. So there's information in the I symbol, information. If you want to manage your 504 dashboard, as I said, you could click along the top to, sh to sort by grade or school or date or birthday. But there are also other ways of managing your dashboard. You can use the dashboard filters to help you just look at a certain number or a certain group of students. So maybe you only want to see the students managed by you. You would click this button. Maybe you want to hide any inactive students. You served a student for a while, they're no longer receiving services, so you can hide that inactive student. Or maybe they've gone to a different plan manager and it's inactive for you. 504 plans only, if you want to see all plans. If you work in a co-op and you, and you, so they have a number of districts, you would choose the district. Or if you work in a district where there's a number of schools that you serve, you could select the school or you can select a grade. So if you believe a student has been shared with you, but you're not seeing them on your 504 dashboard, we'd say check your filters. It could easily be hidden by one of the filters. Whoops, sorry. So to navigate to a student's working forms, then you're just gonna choose their row on your dashboard. I'm just going to choose a name. I could click on cherry blossom or orange leaves or whomever, and that will take me to all of their forms, their 504 forms on this dashboard. Certain forms are available in Spanish, Hmong, and Somali. You can navigate to those forms by clicking SP for Spanish, HM for Hmong, SO for Somali, next to the form name. You can also, if you've got a really lot of students on your dashboard, you can search at the top of the page. Just start typing in the student's name. And if the student has been shared with you, they will appear in your search results. Here we've got another look at that filters, filter and refine. You make those choices. So as I said earlier, when you are working in a, with a student, when you, walk, when you log into SPED forms, first, you're granted exclusive rights. That means if I'm on a certain page for Johnny Jones, others can view the page, but they're not able to work on that page. So as a courtesy, when you're finished with Johnny Jones, log out of SPED forms or return to the student list when you're finished working on that page so others have access to that page. Andrea, am I missing anything here? Not that I can think of. All right. I, the other reminder is SPED forms will automatically log you out after 120 minutes. Every time you hit save, it restarts the timer. So let's say it's the end of the weekend, or it's the start of the weekend. It's 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 um. Friday afternoon at 3.30 and you are done for the day and you just buzz out of the building. What's going to happen is SpedForm is automatically going to log you out after 120 minutes because, right, there's lots of very sensitive information in there. We don't want anybody having access. So it's just going to log you out. Friends, I do want to say, if and when you ever see that message, 
because sometimes you get interrupted and you don't get to sign out the way you intend to. If you ever see that message, don't just close the tab. If you close that message, you would actually still have access to that working page. So if you need to, you could copy that new information into like a Google Doc temporarily before you try and navigate within SPED forms, um, which then when you try and navigate, then you'll officially be logged out. So you still have access to that information until you navigate. And so I hope that that helps, makes it feel a little bit less stressful. Okay, excellent. So sign out using the command found up here, right in that blue person icon when navigating in SPED forms. This includes um, evaluation activities, closing your browser window, as Andrea said, does not keep, does not sign you out. You keep exclusive rights to that page to you for that full hour. All right, I'm throwing it back to Andrea, some 504 basics. All right, so as a general rule within SPED forms, when you are signed in, we would encourage you to um, try to avoid, and it's a muscle memory thing, we get that, but try to avoid using those browser navigations. That's part of the reason it's important to make sure that you sign out at the end of your session. Um, we would encourage you to not use your browser back button or the browser refresh button. The system is designed to be, um, traveled traversed within the within the window itself so um, try to get in that habit of not using those fields i will also say that when i tested autosave autosave is amazing um, but when you when you use autosave if you just close the tab without navigating or officially signing out then it can't do its job. We want to be able to save the data for you, but um, autosave can't do what it likes to want it, what it wants to do if you just close that tab. So that one is probably potentially the most important. Okay. Uh, similarly, like I said, don't just close the browser tab. Click the person icon in the upper right hand corner of every page and choose to sign out. Um, some pro tips about using those date fields. Um, when you see them on forms, they're all over. You can type directly into the date field. Uh, you'll notice that there's some shadow text there. It says the mm slash dd slash yyyy. You don't have to type it like that. Um, as my example says here, the system will change 4-2-24. Uh, it'll reformat it automatically, which is helpful. Another option would be to click that calendar icon. You could click on the today option in the very bottom corner of that pop-up. Uh, you can also use the arrows in the top left and right corners of the calendar icon uh, to page to other months. You can also click on the month and year where it says August 2024. If you click on that, it'll bring you to the entire, it'll show you all of the months within 2024. So you could click on the month and go quickly to a different month that way. Um, you can also paste dates from other date fields within SPED forms. So another other forms stuff, tips and tricks. So when you see a text field that's kind of bigger like this, um, you can type directly into it. You can also use that drop down arrow on the far left hand side. Um, to open drop a drop down, which will have suggestions that are managed by your district or uh, co-op admin for you. And again, even if you choose something from within the drop down options, you still can uh, edit it. Um, yeah. So when you're using, like I said, those team member icons, when you click on that, when you're filling out the forms, uh, it will open your team selector. It will have the student at the top and then parents, then the list of your team members that you control within educator setup and your team member list. Um, and then also those global team members. Depending upon where you are within the system and which field you're trying to fill out, um, it might not show you the student and the parents, um, depending upon what what sort of data it is so just know sometimes you'll see student and parents and sometimes you won't 
So again, that login timer and exclusive rights that Diane mentioned earlier. Uh, another thing about editing forms, you may not have noticed on a previous slide, um, you'll sometimes see that the word processing icon. Um, if you click on that, the page will automatically load some different um, text editing icon icons that you can, you know, highlight and click the B button to make your text bold, or you can add um, bullets or other fun things like that to your text field rather than just generic text. Um, editing forms tips, some more of those. If you ever see little uh, question marks, whether the, if they're a white one, excuse me, um, if you hover over them, it'll provide you some guidance. Um, there might be other places within the system that you would see a blue one. If you if you ever see a question mark icon or a talk bubble icon, um, either hovering or clicking on them will provide you guidance. They, yeah. Um, and then also as you're entering text into those multi-line data fields, if you're using enter or return key, depending on your device, will result in double line spacing. And if you press and hold the shift key, and then use enter or return together, that will result in single line spacing. It's very important, as Diane mentioned, to uh, make sure that you're saving your changes um, and then also finalize your forms when you are done so that we can create that PDF document so that it's there forever. <laughs> So some reasons to finalize. Clicking finalize does create a static copy of the form and stores it in history. It's like taking a photo of the form and storing it in an electronic file cabinet. Um, incomplete forms can't be successfully finalized. The finalize button will be gray, white. Um, if you hover over the button to see the reason the form is considered incomplete, you'll notice that that example there says that it's missing the form date. After you've added the form date and saved the page, then your finalize button would turn blue like the example at the top of this slide uh, and you would be able to successfully finalize the form. After finalization, changes made to the working or the screen copy of the form do not alter that finalized copy stored in history. During that finalization process, it's not as scary as I'm making it look with all of these arrows, but it's always going to show you the name of the form, the name of the student, and then it tells you to enter a comment or to click finalize. So it's going to tell you what to do. You can choose to enter a comment there if you would like to in that field. Um, you can edit it after the fact when it's in history. So don't stress too much about the comment. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want the form to be considered a draft proposal copy or a final copy. The default will be final. Um, you can choose to include the page numbers. And again, the default is that that is turned on. You can decide to cancel, which would return you back to that working document. Maybe you realized you forgot something. <laughs> or you can just go ahead and click that green finalize button. Once you click that green finalize button, you'll get, it'll update to a new pop-up that's now says the final, it'll say, tell you that it's finalizing and then you'll see that it was successful. Uh, we would strongly encourage you to form the habit of clicking go to history to prevent the, to print the form after finalizing it um, from that static copy. Close will, um, clicking close will bring you back to that same working form, um, which is fine too but sometimes we want to make sure that we're using the official uh, finalized document to send to parents and to share with your staff, which is why we recommend going to history. When you get to the history page, this is an example of what it would look like for orange leaves. You'll notice the different column titles, uh, file type, form date, date filed. So that date filed is the date that it was converted, that it was finalized, excuse me. Uh, so that's why the form date is the date of the actual document that you put on the form. And then uh, sometimes they're not the same. As you can see from that first example, we have some pretty bad data in, in, our, in our site. Um, if you 
Um, I'm trying to remember what's on the next page. Next, Diane, would you mind advancing? Yeah, cool, thank you. So if you click on that, P we just have a zoomed in version now of that page. Clicking the PDF icon that you see over on the left-hand side will open the document within the student's history page. It's embedded within your SpedForms window. Um, clicking the chevron. So anytime you see a chevron or that caret icon within SpedForms, it typically means that we are possibly hiding something from you. <laughs> Maybe we're trying to make your page efficient. We're not trying to be deceitful, um, but we want to, yeah. So if you click on that chevron next to the title of the form, you'll see who filed it, who created that PDF, when they did that, and then if they typed a comment, it would be there. And that is also, you could see that add comment hyperlink, that blue hyperlink. Um, you can click on that and you would be able to edit the comment, um, as I mentioned during the finalization process. You can edit it after the fact. Um, history is able to be sorted if you click on the column headings. So just like your dashboard, you could click on file type, form date, date filed, and it will resort your history for you. Um, know that however you have it sorted when you're looking at orange leaves history, that's how, so maybe you're sorting by form date. It will be sorted that way for every student you look at until you change it. Just fun tip for you. Okay. Uh, typing this in the search field at the top of the page. Um, in general, the search field at the top of the page will search the page that you're on. So when you're on the student's history page, it will list the student's finalized documents with the date of the form. And it will do that as you type. So the list will keep getting shorter the more letters you type. Um, you will also see page navigation options that meet that criteria. So at the bottom of this picture, you see 504 forms because we had typed 504, or excuse me, we had typed five. So to return to a student's forms menu, you can use the breadcrumbs. So those are the gray text that you will see at the top of the page. Um, you will always see the student's name in black, and then the we call them breadcrumbs because if you they will lead you back from whence you came. Um, that's not a not a sped forms term, but it is an overall. You'll hear that other places as well. Um, so if you click on 504 forms, that would bring you back to Orange Leaves's 504, the entire list of the forms for that student. Or you could also choose something within the hamburger menu. So clicking history, for example, would bring you to Orange Leaves's history. Another way that's really useful when you're trying to navigate is we have a green switch students button. That's a round button in the upper right hand side just about everywhere throughout the system that you can switch students. So if that process would bring you to the same form for a different student that you have access to. So to work on a student's file, you're just gonna click on the name within the dashboard. And then you're just gonna think about that as a filing cabinet. So if I clicked on Bilbo Baggins, and then I click to 504 forms, I see these files essentially in this filing cabinet, if you will. We've got the 504 forms, we've got additional forms, shared files, and form letters. And so those are different files in your filing cabinet for Bilbo Baggins. So you can click on the form name. So I clicked on the file folder to open it up. Now I can see all the documents in that file folder. Again, I'm still for Bilbo Baggins. I'm in his 504 forms. When I click it, I see all of those documents. Now when you click, you might not see every one of these documents because districts get to choose which documents they're using. My guess is you're gonna see the student rights and the referral, maybe or maybe not referral, parental consent, all of these forms are available. Not all of them have been chosen to be used by your district. And again, Spanish, Hmong, and Somali versions of the forms are available to you. As Andrea said, we've got drop downs, lots of drop downs within the system. Always look for those to give you additional information. Or in my mind, I like to think of them as story starters. 
if you've really written a long paragraph in here, you when you print it, it will all print everything. But if you want to see it, just grab this little corner, these three lines in the corner, and pull it down, and it opens the box for you. Uh, Andrea already said that one. And we all also talked about question marks. That provides just-in-time guidance for you. Word processing tools are available in things like accommodations and aids and services, environmental, physical accommodations, all of that sort of thing. Save and then finalize the 504 plan. So if you've been working on this 504 plan and you and you, the last five minutes you hadn't saved, you just hit finalize, you're going to lose that five minutes of work. Save first then finalize so it, when it goes into history that works for you. Finalizing creates that static copy. Andrea showed you the breadcrumbs. This is another picture. I was in Johnny Jump Up. I went to 504 forms and then I went to eligibility determination. I want to go back to 504 forms. I can just click here or I can do it here on the side. And we're going to jump through these. And we're going to talk about accessing student forms. So I'm in Johnny Jump Up. And I went to Johnny Jump Up's 504 forms. When I open this first folder, you would see these if these are the ones that have been chosen for your district. Under additional forms, there are things like medical documentation of ADHD emergency health and transportation plan, evacuation plan. Again, your district's chosen which of these forms they've made available to you. But all you have to do is open the file folder and you'll see all of the forms. So we're going to spend a, just a few minutes going through the forms that we have, have available. This first one is the 504 student referral. I'm going to make this a little bigger because I think it's hard to see. So the referral shows us the name of the, it'll automatically fill the top, the name of the student, the grade, the, the, that sort of thing, the birth date. You can put in the date. And then there are current educational programs or services. You would click any of the boxes. Also, you can see that there is a text box here. There is not a Chevron, so there's no automatic uh, drop downs in there. This is just something that you would add in for this particular student on this particular form. There's a parental consent form that's available. There is an eligibility determination form that's available. And this one does have a lot of Chevrons or drop downs that have pre-populated information for you that you can add and then edit. So it's, like I said, it's a story starter for you. We have a notice of conference meeting. We have the 504 plan. Lots of information built in here for startups. We also have what we call additional forms. Again, you may or may not have all of these forms listed. Medical documentation for ADHD, emergency health and transportation information, a record of team meetings. Some districts use this and some districts do not. We have a communication log. This is a great tool to be using within your district. As long as everybody that's working with a student uses it, it's a super way of letting um, letting everyone know what was communicated and keeping a record of it. So at the top would be some internal notes, like maybe the best hours to call the parent. Here you can see I've called, my student's name is demo student. You can see that I called the parent on this date and I called the parent on this date. It automatically adds the most recent um, information to the top. So if I want to add something, I click the Add button here. And then this pops open. 
who's making the contact? Well, it's me. So that's going to fill for you. You contact and you get to choose somebody's name. You can add their phone number. The relationship is a drop down. So you get to choose that. Add the date and time. It auto You don't have to add the date and time, I should say. It auto fills for you. But why are you contacting this person? So it's automatically filling in that name. What are some notes? And the drop down is how did you communicate? Maybe it was email. Maybe it was a phone call. Maybe it was in person. That information is there. And then you hit that save button. And then this is going to then auto populate and it'll be right up here. And you can, the next person can go along and, and just click on these little sh um, talk bubbles and it will show you who called. So if the nurse called to talk about something that happened on the playground, everybody knows the nurse did. So that means the plan manager doesn't have to do that or this principal doesn't have to do that. It's just a great way of keeping track of the communication for individual students. We also have an evacuation plan. You choose the type of plan here. We've got choices like the severe weather, the fire drill, building evacuation, the school lockdown, power outage, that sort of thing. You complete the form, you can save it, finalize it, and then share with the appropriate individuals. Not every student needs an evacuation plan. But there certainly are students uh, that, that do need that. And so this is a great way. And things are very different for severe weather, right? If you've got a student that um, reacts badly, for example, to, or has difficulty with uh, the sitting quietly in a, in, a bunch of, in a bunch of kids in the hallway for the tornado drill, you've got to have a plan. Versus when the fire drill is going off, that might be a totally different thing for that child. And so you can create as many evacuation plans as you need for individuals as needed by the individuals or if needed by the individuals. We've got an authorization of release of information. We've, we are finding, this is the SPEDFORMS version. It covers all the things that you need, but we're finding that many doctor's offices want to use their own forms. But up to you, we have this available. Adding documents to history. Andrea, I'm going to throw it your way. All right. So there's a possibility, of course, that you will receive a document that is from an outside source that pertains to this student. Uh, that could include a doctor's report, due process or 504 forms from out of the state, uh, potentially information from an outside agency, you can upload and save these documents to a student's history. So to do that, you would scan the document into your computer. You would name the document using a descriptive title. And then from the SPED forms menu, choose the appropriate student. Then you would want to navigate to that student's history. When you get to history, there is going to be an upload button towards the upper right hand side of the page. Uh, you can then you'll get a, this pop up that you see here on the page. You would click, click select files or you could click and drag a file into that big gray drop, um, box. You would then click that blue upload button on your pop up. Uh, the, ch the background color of the file will then likely change to a light green color and you would then be able to click that green continue bu button, excuse me. You'll then, the, the pop-up that you see will then change. You can um, add a name, form date, and a comment for that document and click save. So for the form date for these, for these uploaded documents, typically that would be um, the date of the report that, that the um, that they wrote the report, for example, and then that would appear in the form date column in history. So then, uh, again, you can still continue to edit comments, and um, you can actually change the name of the form as well after you've uploaded it if you need to. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use that search field um, to search for specific files for a student, uh, for specific documents. 
All right. So we're going to talk about 50 forms, adding a new student. A Andrew's going to take this, but this will be very individual for your district. You're going to need to find out from your district how this is done. Some districts do automatically nightly uploads. Some districts allow plan managers to do this. Some districts only allow people that are with administrative rights to do this. So we'll spend, we've got just a couple slides here, but you would need to know first off from your district, who gets to add those 504 students. So if your district uses data import, each evening data from your school student information system is imported into SPED forms. If a student's address or parent's phone number changes, the student's record within SPED forms would be automatically updated. Uh, all students registered in the district are listed within SPED forms typically. That might not be the case even if your district doesn't import. Uh, each import is customized. Let's go ahead to the next slide. Thank you. So from a version two page in that top chunk of options within your hamburger menu, you will potentially see the option to add a new student. Um, as Diane mentioned, this would depend on your district process and then also your permissions. You would go ahead and click that. If that button is not available to you, um, you've not been given permission, reach out to your uh, SPED forms administrator to discuss this. If you have been granted access, again, go ahead and click add new student and follow the steps displayed on the next slide, which would be to fill out the pertinent information for your student. The SSID field, that is the MARS number. Um, it's in the state of Minnesota, it's 13 digits long. Um, it's really pretty important to get that correct when you add a student to SPED forms. Um, so please pay special attention to that. The different data fields within this add new student page, the required ones do have that blue asterisk um, indicating that they are required to be filled in. Um, when you're finished, you would go ahead and click the save button, which would be in the upper right hand corner of the page. So once you get started using SPED forms and, and at this point, you may not have a lot of students on your caseload, you might be building this caseload. As I see, we've got some people that are very new to SPED forms and we've got a number of new districts choosing to use our 504 forms. So once you've sort of built that list of kids, then you can use our 504 reports. There are a lot of them, but keep in mind, they're only as accurate as the information that you all have entered. So you can go to admin. So the administrators can go to admin reporting. They're, need to, gonna, they're going to need to go to the general ed forms tab. And I frequently forget that and think, where are my 504 reports? Because 504 is general ed. So general ed, and then they can go to quick reports. Um, if you are using something that, that if you're using the version, if you're on something that looks like version 2.0, you can see admin reporting here. Again, general ed forms, quick report. And if there are some 504 reports, you can search using that search field at the top, right? You can search that you really like. Click the star, it will become yellow, and then it will always be at the top of your list. Administrator reports. Some of the reports um, include things like the 504 Accommodations Aids and Services Report. Gives you lots of really helpful information. The assignment, accommodations, all of the accommodations available, special considerations, substantial limitations, all of that is in the 504 Accommodations Aids and Services Report. The 504 plan dates report, that includes these documents or the, this, these information. The student ID, name, birth date, grade, when was the eligibility date, the last conference date, the dismissal date, et cetera. We also have one called 504 plan testing accommodations report that you might find very helpful. And any of those reports can then, once you open the report, it can be exported to a file. So it can go to things like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, and then you can slice and dice any way you'd like. 
Finally, today we're going to talk about support. Um, this is a lot of information. As a, we said earlier, this is going, this was recorded and this will go into our YouTube page, but there are other things you can find as well. So if you go to spedforms.com, um, you would log in and uh, under blog, you would you could hit click here to receive our news via email. So you would sign up for our mailing list. We promise we don't fill your inbox with information. If you get something from us four times a month, that would be a lot. And we don't send you frivolous information. We send you information you're going to want to know about. You can also go to support and there are Educator Guide 2.0. It's always being worked on. Uh, frequently asked questions. This is where you would connect to our YouTube tutorials and our upcoming events. We do things like we call, we call Thursdays at 3 and you will see what the topics of the upcoming Thursday at 3 are. They're informal discussions, right? It's always the same link and we are happy to have you contribute, uh, participate in all or, or part of the session. I like to go to playlists when I'm using our YouTube tutorials because then you can go to the section 504 playlist and you can see all of the most recent uh, trainings that we've done there and share with individuals. Also, I this, this is just a, a thing. I, I became aware of Ratwick, Rozek and Maloney's free 504 quarterly meetings. You used to have to drive down to be there. Now they do it um, virtually. And so you get free information from attorneys. It's, um, I, don't, I don't get any cut from this. I just think that why would you not take advantage of this? Um, the, the last one was on Thursday, May 23rd, but if you go to Ratwick, Rozak, and Maloney, you will see the link to the next news and events. Also, just know we have a 504 advisory group from across Minnesota. We're always listening looking for new information, making sure we are current and up to date. So thank you for joining us today. We were glad you're here.